Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. WOKB Winter Garden Orlando. Welcome to Real Family Talk with your host, Jay Real, where we talk about real issues facing us today. Enjoy the show. Real Family Talk. talk, talk, talk. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another week of Real Family Talk. This is your host, Jay Real. Hope everybody is warm, uh, especially uh, in the city of Orlando here. It is a cold night for us, so I hope everybody in Orlando is warm. We want to definitely send, uh, as warm as you can be anyway, uh, we want to definitely send a uh, shout out to everybody uh, in the Northeast, though. Uh, Hurricane Sandy has collided uh, with a uh, storm. Uh, in uh, in that particular area and is causing all kind of havoc. Uh, so I hope those folks uh, are staying warm too, to the best of their ability. Hopefully they got, uh, I was talking to a friend today and said her grandma um, is in New York and uh, she was fortunate enough to apparently have some kerosene heaters. And so the whole family is That's at the house in New about. York and uh, they have some kerosene heaters and uh, doing their best to stay warm. So uh, I don't know if all the families in uh, New York got kerosene heaters or in that area, but uh, hopefully they got something to keep them warm and uh, kind of get out of all that uh, crazy weather. I was looking at pictures, man. Did you see the pictures no. where the water was up to the headlights yeah. riding down the, uh, in, the, in New York? I was like, wow. That was bad. That was uh, pretty bad. Pretty bad. I see it for all the people who, for all the people who threw who who got rid of their old school heaters. I bet you they loving them kerosene heaters now. <laughs> like they all at their house. Oh, I'm so glad you got your <laughs> kerosene heaters. Where they sell kerosene at? Because that's the thing. I mean, it's this storm, but then it's cold. Yeah, and you got to go to you got to go to the country to get kerosene. So you drive what 50 miles out the city to go get some kerosene. Mm, I guess. Thank I God. Guess. Thank God this thing. See, warm. that's a, a, that's the a thing. Don't throw away or get rid of your old stuff. All this technology is great, but at the end of the day, you got to go back to basics. That's why I still got my VCR. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and my Nintendo. <laughs> He's still rocking Nintendo. <laughs> Uh, let me go ahead and uh, welcome you guys uh, to the to the show tonight. Um, as always, we got Jeremy's in the building. How you doing, Jeremy? I'm good. I'm good as always. And awesome. it's not that cold out there, y'all. Come on now. I mean, it's chilly, but come on now. It ain't like we need big snow coats or something. No, but it's, it's Florida. Nice. It's nice. <laughs> uh, how you doing tonight, Miss McCray? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Awesome, awesome. And uh, Mr. Micah King, how you doing back there, sir? I'm doing great, indeed. Awesome. You forgot, uh, you know, brother... Younger brother just came from Tennessee. So no, I didn't just is, come. Uh, I've been down. I've been back. I've been back. I've been back home for two years now. I've been it back home been for cold two years. For like now. three, four years. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's not <laughs> that bad. Yet. It, it's all right. It's only like what sixty some degrees outside. You went outside at like two o'clock. You didn't even need a jacket because mm. the sun was beaming pretty good. Well, it, nonetheless, it's 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 cool for us. Florida and, and uh, some some of us are pulling out jackets and uh, oh I got mine on I'm not and, saying you don't need a jacket I'm sweaters. just saying it's not that cold you, you <laughs> looking mighty snug right now you got the hat you got the jacket stay snug. you got all of that got some stay snug I'm just saying um but uh yeah so uh it's uh it's a little chilly but we'll be all right we will be all right um I gotta I gotta send get a your sh- kerosene heaters you'll be all right <laughs> I gotta send a shout out though. Uh, and, and y'all may get tired of this, uh, but it's coming every week that a W gets placed <laughs> in the win column. The Steelers won, baby. Oh That's what I'm talking about, baby. Oh, they did. The Steelers oh. won again. In those ugly uniforms. That's okay. They was out there in the Bumblebees, but, Ooh. but they won. Ooh. They won. They beat the Redskins on Sunday. Uh, mm. Another W in the win column. Okay. We will see you guys <laughs> in the playoffs. <laughs> See who uh, in the playoffs? The the Steelers, brother. The Steelers will be in the playoffs because uh, we we back we back two and oh, uh, two, by default. two oh win streak right now. So uh, it's it's looking good. I'm loving loving what I'm seeing. Loving what I'm seeing from the Steelers right now. Ah, uh, but we'll move on. Four zero seven eight nine four sixteen eighty is the number. Four zero seven eight nine four sixteen eighty. NBA is the starts number. tonight. Oh, actually, the game should be on now. Yeah, it was on when I was leaving. What channel was the game on? TNT. TNT. Celtics, uh, Celtics in the heat. heat. They got their the ring, the banner, one up. That's okay. Le- it matters most of this if they win. 
Are they going to win tonight? What do you say? I mean, I, beat the Celtics I, I, at yeah, home? I think they're going to beat the Celtics. I yeah. think they'll yeah, win they win tonight. They should beat them at home tonight. Yeah, they said Miami got one of the best crowds right now. Got to. I guess I, we'll find out. I'm, I'm not. I'm not uh, let me know, uh, brother, younger brother. Yes. Are you a fan of this James Harden trade? Am I a fan of the trade? Yes. Uh, it's two ways to look at it. Um, I'm a fan be- for. Uh, I'm a fan with regards to James Harden of the trade, and the reason is he left because he wanted a maximum deal. He could not get that in OKC, so that's why he turned it down. Obviously, he's going to test the market at the end of the year. You know what? OKC's okay, so like, you know what? You're going to do that. We know you're going to get a max offer. We know we're not going to match it. So, you know what? If we trade you now, I can get everything I can right now because it's a hot seat. So, they got Kevin Martin, who's a good scorer. He averaged about 18, 19 a game, has been since he came in the league. You get – um, I know they got two first-round picks. They got a boatload of stuff. And, like, a second-round pick. And they got the um the, the rookie out of UConn, they, Jeremy Lamb. He's like a 6'9", 6'10", guard. So, everybody's been so, big on so so basically you know, they did what Orlando should have did with Dwight basically exactly exactly <laughs> basically. and that and that's why that GM's understudy is the GM in Orlando right now uh, uh. see soon as they knew because they not they ain't got time to play games you know they okay see they, exactly like they were saying they don't have they're not going to generate the kind of money like the Knicks generate the Knicks can lose and they still go make a hundred million dollars mm-hmm. a year because it's the Knicks you know okay see they got to win to make money you know what I'm saying so, you know, they was like, we ain't playing no games, okay. But so does Orlando. That's what I really don't understand what Orlando is going to do this year. It's, because it's, it's the reason they got a new G. Because <laughs> nobody's going to buy tickets that I know of. Oh, okay. you know, th- That's I would right. say th- Orlando's going to be all they, right. they got some no, loyal, they got they got some loyal, loyal season ticket holders. They got loyal yeah. season ticket holders. And obviously, you know, your Miamis, your L.A.s, your New Yorks, uh, your Bostons, they're going to still draw the, draw the crowds. Even if they don't sell out, they're still going to – you know, fill it up to 80, 90%, which is pr- still good enough for them to turn a profit after everybody they bought all the concessions. They're going to be giving tickets away at the stay in school jam. <laughs> they, they might not. You, you, know, you might be able to go up to it when they play Toronto and get in for free. <laughs> get in for free. And s- sit right next <laughs> next to Jock Vaughn. Sitting right there behind the players. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about it, man. You got I got it. you. I, I, some water. I sub in. <laughs> I said, y'all you know, gonna, y'all gonna get off my. Y'all magic. gonna get off the magic. Y'all gonna wow. stop the magic gonna be all right. Somebody need to get on them. <laughs> <laughs> the magic That's gonna be the all right. They may not be. Uh, they may not be the best team in the league this year. They're going no. for but, the worst. But, but, uh, they but, they, but they're gonna, gonna try hold to lose. on their own. This, this, this is one thing I love about the Sentinel because they love the magic. They promoting. Oh, now it's heart and hustle too. I don't see no heart or no hustle on that team. No. <laughs> now, besides a Flalo, I will say this: a Flalo, he will hustle. The one that came from Denver, he will hustle. Now, the, the Magic players that were already here, besides Glenn Davis, ain't no heart, no hustle, none of them. Well, Jameer always had heart and hustle in college, yeah. But besides, <laughs> besides Aww. Jameer, I don't know, man. From what I heard, um, from what I've read, I, I think they're trying to do like Cleveland did when Cleveland got LeBron. And that's lose a bunch of games to try to you try know to get the, a better draft pick and yeah. you know because why would you trade Ryan Anderson like they they did no, a they lot didn't of trade him they 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 just didn't match his offer right that was dumb you that's Ryan Anderson you gonna we'll not see. match the but most they, improved it, it's one we'll it's see. one of them things they rebuilding and, and and at the end of the day really Ryan Anderson is a complimentary player he needs a superstar to thrive I don't know he needs a superstar to thrive because you need he could thrive because everybody's in the paint. Guarding Dwight, so he steps out, frees up room for Dwight, and he can hit the jumper consistently. So, you know, I wouldn't have traded him. Well, we'll see, we'll see what happens. It is what it is. Yeah, we can talk all day about it. It is we what got it is. To talk about you the team about is the team. <laughs> about the tragedy, uh, and uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, like I said, I don't expect them to, to you know blow the world open and uh, get in the NBA finals or anything like that. But uh, it's the Eastern Conference. Um, you don't usually have to uh, win, you know, 90% of your games in the Eastern Conference to kind of slip into the playoffs. Yeah. So so maybe maybe they uh, they may not be the best team, but maybe they're good enough to slip on in, and uh, that's good enough for us right now. Nah. Uh, you know, you can't nah, – there, there is nobody nah. that's going to – that's going to blow you away as far as their talent as we see it today. They don't uh, need, we'll see they what happens when the, the season starts, but uh, we'll see. The season is starting. And, uh, the, goal needs to, the goal is to not make the playoffs. That's the whole goal. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> what do you mean? Go. They trying to lose trying to not that's, make the playoffs. That's, that's what I said. Meetings. Tr- that's what trust me. About. Trust me. If it comes down to the end not. of the season, they be floating around the A spot. Don't be surprised if all of a sudden Big Baby got an injury. Nah. They man. can't play. You must be crazy. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> they Let's, do not want can we play a game? Season. Can we play one game before we, we, we decide the fate of the magic? Let's no. just say that. No. Season opens <laughs> No. We don't want to see I already know. They worse. <laughs> they worse than the Steelers. Oh God. Uh oh. And we'll move on Uh-oh. after that comment. Four oh, seven eight nine four. Are they as bad as Kansas City Chiefs? Ooh. Four oh seven eight nine four sixteen eighty. Four oh seven eight nine four sixteen eighty is the number. We have some uh we're gonna have some people calling in tonight um to come in and uh, help us discuss the amendments uh that were um that are are, are on the ballot. Uh, this will be for November 6th or for those of you that have been early voting that you've been reading and deciding upon. So we're going to hear a little bit about that. Um, but while we're waiting, though, for that call, um, this past Sunday, of course, was Souls to the Polls. Um, and it's amazing to see all of the uh, people that have went out from all the different churches and different organizations within the uh, Orange County and across the state, uh, across the country, for that matter. Uh, that participated in Souls to the Polls. Um, it's pretty exciting to see us so energized um, to get out and, and vote. And, of course, we, we uh, a lot of them were chanting four more years, so we pretty much know who they were voting for, which is cool. Uh, everybody has their own decision to make. But, uh, but yeah, it's just exciting okay, to see we'll black folks out and, you know, getting excited about putting or at least casting a vote for, for somebody. That is uh, awesome. Did... Uh, I know a lot of you guys have been early voting as well. Uh, I will be early voting. I haven't done it quite yet, but I'll be doing it by the end of the week uh, and uh, casting my votes as well. But uh, just exciting to see us out and supporting candidates uh, for election. That is just uh, awesome. Kind of warms my blood on on a cold evening night to, like tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Make it feel like you're back in the Huntsville. <laughs> nah, brother, it was, too, it was colder than this in Huntsville. Yes, sir. <laughs> Huntsville was a lot colder than this. But uh, but yeah, man, that that's just uh, that's just awesome, man. Uh, tell me, uh, did you uh, what, what were the lines like when you guys went out to early vote? I've been hearing the lines have been extremely long. It depends on when you go. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe 30 minutes. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. not too bad. That's not too bad. What about you? Well, I heard a couple of things. John? I was going to go Saturday. And um, when I got, I was going to go, but I got caught up. But I had no intention of waiting in any lines, obviously. But I was message relayed that the line was around the block. Then uh, also, I heard, though, you know, people going down to the clerk of the courts. I'm sorry, not the clerk of the courts. The, um, was it oh the supervisor elections office what mm-hmm. I meant to say and they were walking straight in yeah you know but um I went Sunday at the church in Apopka and we were in line about a half hour you know mm-hmm. right in but I did that on purpose because I was actually trying to get there before the souls or the pose crowd came and when I was there we, we were in line we saw uh, Xander's funeral home they were shuffling people in you know and the line started kind of growing in you know so I tried to get mine in you know I'm sorry I just don't like to wait in line like that. That's all right. As long as you're win. voting, brother. I don't win in seven fifty nine. As long as you're if voting, I had to. <laughs> as long as you're voting, you long know that's all that matters. Man. That is all that matters. Yeah, I can't do the lines. <laughs> I can't do the lines. I just, yeah, I was talking to I a coworker like today. He was telling me he waited uh, about two hours uh, in line this weekend to get out there and vote. So uh, the man, the people are out, man. People are excited. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm more, 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 I mean, so more proud of people good. who do wait in line. I mean, like you say, lines around the block. And, and people are faithful standing there in line. Yeah, man, they got to get their vote in, brother. Yeah, like, from what I from like what I heard, at least in Orange day. County, I know more. It seems more Democrats are, are voting early uh, than Republicans at the moment. But uh, you know, I think that uh, don't don't let it fool you though. <laughs> they coming. You know they coming. <laughs> they yeah. coming. They definitely like coming. This. So so we'll just wait and see what happens. Uh, November six. Uh, assuming assuming of course you know there's been a lot of talk now that uh, maybe some postponing potentially of the election uh, due to Hurricane Sandy um, as, as I was listening on the radio on the way in. Yes. Apparently there's no uh, precedent set for that option, but uh, the question is, you know, are, are places in the Northeast going to be back up online uh, um, with power right. in order to be able to allow their citizens to make it to the polls and vote? So I'm sure as the, the week goes on and we and, and the longer people are without power in the Northeast, I'm sure this conversation will just kind of build and build. And uh, ultimately, we'll see what happens 
uh, as it relates to that. But uh, but I think it's going to be an interesting week when it comes to that, just to see how we we deal with the Northeast and, and the election and and blah, blah, blah. I guess it's a, just another talking point for the talking heads to keep this conversation going. But uh, yeah. we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, I see I got my uh, my guest is here, or at least on the line with me. How you doing tonight, Tez? I'm fine. How are you? I'm um, doing pretty good, Tez. Good evening. Good, good evening, good evening honey. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for, ha- uh, thank you for coming on, Tez. We appreciate it. So Tez is our guest tonight. She's going to uh, talk to us about uh, some of the different amendments uh, that are going on. So what I'm going to do, Tez, is I'm going to uh, read uh, or call out the amendment, and I'll have you uh, explain it for us. And then uh, if anyone has questions, again, the number 407-894-1680 is the number, 407-894-1680. So let's start with uh, Amendment 1, Tez, talking about health care services. What's this about? Well, this is kind of one of the ones that can kind of be confusing to the public. Really, all of them are confusing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people can say that that was uh, on purpose or, you know, just to get some clarity with the Constitution. But... Amendment 1 is based on the health care referendum. It doesn't mean that necessarily anything will change whether you vote yes or no. Um, As we know, health care has passed. But this is pretty much on Amendment 1 to kind of sum it up. I like to speak in layman's terms. Um, But pretty much saying where you feel um, as far as health care is concerned. Um, Since the Supreme Court has upheld the federal government's right to impose the individual mandate, which was last year when we got this information, now we know the Supreme Court has, um, in the state of Florida, in fact, uh, you know, let that amendment pass. Um, this still is a, pretty much if you want to be simple about it, a survey that says, would you be for health care or not? Um, we have to understand that even though things do pass, um, there's always opportunities to come up, you know, at a later time. For example, um, I always try to mix in local politics as well because, you know, that's important to me also. But Sunrail is a good example how Sunrail passed. But you'll see a lot of those on a lot of local ballots, um, you know, questions and things. I've seen it even at a hive mob. They kind of, you know, ask, are you for Sunrail or are you not for Sunrail? Because there's always going to be opposition against those things. So Amendment 1 is pretty much saying, you know, would you be for health care or would you not? How does that apply to the state of Florida? Because it's important to know that even though health care passed on the federal level, uh, it was uh, upheld in the state of Florida. Now, Supreme Court has said move forward. Um, everyone has until 2014 in order to uh, put that into place into local businesses. But we'll see what, what will happen between now and 2014. So pretty much in politics, nothing is ever over. And that's what this amendment is pretty much about. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, that is uh, Amendment 1. So so let me ask you this. So if I voted to support Amendment 1, ultimately, what, what am I saying? You're pretty much saying on Amendment 1, again, is not because what people have to understand is we have a constitution in the state of Florida just as well as Florida does. And one reason why I've been working so hard this year and focusing on Florida as opposed to federal elections getting caught up on the federal side is because people need to really understand we have our own constitution, our own rules, our own laws, you know, just like any other state. And I don't think the average voter really, really understands that. Federal does trickle down at some point, but ultimately it's up to to the state. So what Amendment 1 is saying is if you're voting yes on Amendment 1, you represent an attempt to opt out the Florida opt-out federal health care reform requirements. In other words, you support that if, if Florida wants to opt out of the federal requirements that President Obama has put in place, by saying yes, you agree to that. Oh, okay. uh, if you say yes, you want to add language to the Florida Constitution that says that this type of law could be found unconstitutional. What oh, that yeah. means is, kind of like how we see on the local level with the sick pay initiative. Again, I try to you know layer how these things work on local, federal. You can put sick pay on the ballot, but also commissioners have the right to put a different amendment, you know, on the county law, the county constitution, that is against that. So with, if you're voting yes on this, let's say, for example, it does, you know, everything moves forward and health care reform does apply to the state of Florida in 2014, this particular law could possibly, by voting yes, bring up more legislation in the House that says that although health care reform is item one, we're going to go in and put in item two that says that we 
as Floridians believe that the health care law is unconstitutional. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so basically, so there's always a, 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 you know, we always say there's always a reaction to an action. Mm-hmm. So this is the reaction, the survey, if you will, not changing the Constitution, but a survey that says how many people do we have on board with this so that legislators can put that into play down gotcha. the road. So it's, it's basically the uh, the Florida Congress basically saying, listen, you know, we've already been doing our part to um, to avoid this particular uh, Affordable Care Act from, you know, kind of taking place. Now, do the citizens of our state support our ideas or are the citizens of our state against it? And, of course, if we're supporting it, then that gives them sort of that fervor to go, okay, they want us to keep going, and so they continue to move. Uh, or if we're opposing it, that sort of, you know, kind of puts them on, on, uh, on uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Puts them on deck, if you will, to say, all right, our citizens aren't behind us. So if we continue to do this, we're kind of moving against what the will of the people is kind of idea. That's right? correct. That's mm-hmm. absolutely correct. Gotcha. And so a vote no would say um, the citizen will be saying, I want to comply with the federal health care reform. Gotcha. You know, I do not want to conflict with the U.S. Constitution in regard to health care coverage, I will allow the enactment of the potential Florida laws that require health care coverage. And that is why, again, even on Facebook, I know you're one of my friends on Facebook, I, I don't talk about federal at all because I believe there's so many people talking about federal, they're, they're so confused on how things really happen. We can be excited about whether one president gets in office over another. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to the state. Because the state is the president. Does that make sense? So there's been a lot of confusion, which is why I was on the ballot last year as a state rep, got off the ballot, because everyone was running for office and and, and wanting to get on that Obama train, but no one was really spending the time to talk about um, how Florida would be affected. And and it's a huge misconception. And, And unfortunately, if people are not informed like they should be, uh, Florida is going to experience a great loss, um, effective as soon as this election is over. Federal laws take years to come down the pipe. Right. Um, but when you talk about state laws and not paying attention, this is stuff that can go into effect immediately. Next day. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's. Uh, you guys have any questions about Amendment One? No. No. But I'm just so thankful that you are on tonight, really breaking it down. Because as a voter, when you sit and you read these amendments and you're sitting there and you're like, what what is this language? What are they trying to tell me? And if Mm -hmm. you don't go out yourself and try to understand what it is and have someone like you to break it down. And if you just mark it, oh, yes, 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 or no, whatever it is, without being informed, then we're in a heap of trouble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and one thing that I'll mention is these amendments are passed with 60 percent. Of the individuals that vote, not vote total, but vote for this amendment. So I know there's, uh, I've seen even elected officials say, if you don't understand, don't vote at all. Well, I don't know if that's the message that they should be sending. Never. Again, I, I give this presentation from a nonpartisan standpoint, mm-hmm. but if I was a Democrat, which most of the vote no um, positions are, you know, in line with the Democrat Party, I don't know if I would be telling people to vote no because if 60%, of 10 people show up and 60%, six people say yes, then they're in place. I'm not talking about total vote. I'm talking about it actually circling the bubble for Amendment 1. So you can have 5 million people show up, but if only 10 people vote yes or no on Amendment 1, those 10 people have just decided the fate of the state of Florida. Gotcha. Wow. So when I hear uh, people say, and I, I know some have said, oh, Jim, you don't understand it, just nothing at all. Well, my question is, if you're allegedly for one side or the other, why are you not informing the people and giving them a a vote no or a vote yes? Because in all actuality, you're appearing as if you're helping the citizen. When in all actuality, you're well aware that as long as 60% of people and those 60% will more than likely be the informed 60%, and unfortunately we just haven't done our due diligence, I'm an independent, just for the record, was a Democrat, am no longer one because we're not doing our due diligence on knowledge and voter information and education. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. So by not doing that, you're pretty much setting up the people to fail to say, oh, just vote no. 
Don't worry about getting information. Right. Don't worry about informing them. And you know why? Because nobody wants to do the work of actual informing. Exactly. Because that would mean that you would have to shift your direction to not just having a campaign about yourself, but just being focused on uh, voter education. Yeah. And that's a job that a lot of people don't want because it doesn't pay well. Right. I can tell you that. <laughs> I agree, and, and and that's 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 the fault of. Um, I mean, I, I mean, obviously during this season, you you find a lot of uh, candidates show up at at different churches, you know, on Sunday or whatever, and uh, talk about about what they're doing, and uh, that's that's one of the things I notice is that is they when it comes to these amendments, they're just like, oh, don't worry about it, trust me, I, I've been there. Just vote no. That's the thing to do. Don't even just go no straight down the ballot. And it's like, wait a minute, I want, let me, can somebody explain what's supposed to be happening here? You know, that's it's it's cool that that's your opinion, but but can you? Because I may not agree with you. Just because you at the black church don't mean everybody voting for <laughs> trying that's to vote Democratic. Yeah. So so and, help and you know, also, break it down. Yeah, and two things to that. One, again, I know there are some Democrats who say they're Democrats that tell people not to vote at all when they know full well that sixty percent will pass it regardless. So you should be promoting the the vote no. And then there's the second part that you're saying, oh, everybody just vote no. I have a problem with that just as well as I do that everybody say just go straight down the line with all Democrat candidates. Uh, I don't believe in straight party ticket. Never have, never will. I believe in going line for line just like the IRS. The yeah. IRS <laughs> doesn't go straight, straight down the line. They want to know every single line, you know, because right. if you look at your local taxes, if you look at your IRS taxes, just to give an example, every line does what? Associate with another line. Exactly. If you look at it, it says, okay, if you fill in line nine like this, then also go look at line five and subtract line five from line nine, and then you come up with nine eleven. You know the line eleven. Just as you know, just throwing something out. So that's the same way that the Democrat, uh, not Democrat, but the Democratic process works. There's no, you know, just straight ticket. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's all in line in a seamless layer effect, which is what happened in 2010, when in 2008, when all the Democrats got voted in. And a lot should not have been voted in. They were not prepared. Were not leaders. Went in President o under President Obama and were, and were not. They were not able to hold the line. Right. All right. So you really have to pay attention to each line. Like you, when I got when you said you were concerned about two nine two four nine eleven. I mean a uh, one three six eight eleven. Well, the property tax bundle is two four nine eleven. So eleven is relevant to two four and nine as well. So mm. those are the things that, you know, you politics is, a, is yeah, it, it all layers. We've had a big problem of making us bundled, saying all vote no, all vote Democrat, all vote, and that's the reason why our community's needs are not being met. Because if you look, I give an example all the time. When I had bundled service with my cable and said, okay, my phone, my Internet, and my cable will all be under one bill. Well, allegedly, Bright House makes me feel like, oh, I'm really saving you know, save the money. It's bundled. It's one payment. But then when I wasn't able to make the payment, I don't even have the phone to call somebody to get the money. I couldn't go online to transfer the money to make the payment. Exactly. <laughs> but now that I've separated my services, and now that I have AT&T for my Internet, and now that I have Sprint for my phone, and now that I have Bright House for my cable, it seems that I'm paying more, but actually I have more freedom. Mm. Because as being in business, sometimes my phone is cut off. But hey, if my phone is cut off, I can get online and go on Google Voice and call somebody. Exactly. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I, like, I like those uh, practical, I, I like that analogy. You know, I, I like you know, hey, well, you broke it down. You know, I'm a poet now. <laughs> you know, so. one thing I do on the side, I'm a poet. So I understand metaphors and what I do. People think I just do poetry. No, poetry is the, uh, is the gift of metaphors and translating things into metaphors and stories. And so that's what I do with politics. I appreciate it. So when you it. think about that, then you have to think about, well, wait, wait a minute, Bright House is kind of getting over on me. All cause right. Because it's really... Let's well, uh, I, mean, I can't get anything. I can't get this. I can't get. I can only get Bright House. <laughs> so the, the question is, why only get Bright House, and why are you telling me to bundle service? And that's a real life story, Jimmy. I mean, because my cable get cut off. I keep it real all the way. One, you know, when my cable was cut off, and I said, wait a minute, I can't even make a phone call. <laughs> I, you know, I, I get you. online on the phone to check to transfer the money to make the payment. I so there has to be a setup. So anytime there's a bundle effect, there's a setup. We're also bundled. I'll let you get to the other members, but I'm gonna count on my little roll with the bundle. <laughs> I <laughs> see that. I that. see that. She is on the with the bundle. That when you talk about Lily Ledbetter, for example, you'll hear 
you know, women need the fair rights, you know, to pay. Well, first of all, let's break down the bundle. You know, they say, uh, give me justice, give me death. I'm, I'm get, give me liberty, give me death. I'm about give me details, give me death. Because the fact of the matter is, black is white men, this is the pay scale, white men, black men, white women, and then black women. So first of all, women are not even on an even scale. So before you bundle me into a package like Lily Levin and say, oh, we want all women to get equal pay, well, the first question is, are black women even equal pay with white women? Mm. And those are the things that you don't hear. Right. The questions enough, that you aren't can being agree asked. that Democrat process is, hey, the Democrat way is going to help women, but what are going to happen to the black women? The Democrat way is going to help jobs, but what's going to happen to the double double-digit unemployment in the black community. Mm. The questions that aren't being answered, but we can go on all day uh, on those types of conversations. Let's uh, let's get back to these amendments. Remember, 407-894-1680 is the number, 407-894-1680. I want to go to Amendment 3. It's the one, uh, State Government Revenue Limitation. What's this about? I like this one because um, this is very unique, and it kind of... All of them are very confusing. Um, I do this presentation all the time, and each time I learn something different, and I like to hear how different, you know, different people's personality. But basically, to break it down on a layman's turn, is this is an amendment to say how much money are we going to collect in the state of Florida? Um, the state of Florida does not have a good track record on how much revenue we collect. We're actually uh, we don't collect as much revenue as other states, and so this is kind of limiting how much when, where, and why. If you vote yes on Amendment 3, you're saying pretty much that regardless of how fast Florida grows and the income and in in regards to inflation, you want the taxes to stay the same. Um, It restricts government revenue in good and poor economic times. So the question is, who defines what's good times and poor times? Mm. So, so th- this this sounds you, like a uh, Republican initiative that seeks to kind of keep small government um, so that government isn't, quote-unquote, exploding, uh, which is, is usually a, um, a Republican platform to keep government as small as possible. So support for this seems like a, a support on the idea that government should be limited to a certain position, uh, regardless of what the times are. It should be limited to a certain position and to, to stay that way. Is that is that kind of what I'm reading here? That's correct, but I'll be devil's, uh, the devil's advocate. Um, all of these uh, amendments came out of a uh, Republican House and Senate, but at the same time, just because it came to Republican House and Senate does not mean that Democrats are not on board or agree to some of these laws, or not because just because somebody's a Democrat or Republican doesn't mean that they're in favor of all of it. But I'll be devil's advocate on this. When you talk about good and and poor economic times, well, I could could go to the other side and say, I keep hearing Democrats saying it's getting better, but it's not getting better in the state of Florida. So would they say that this is good times or bad times? Mm. So the question comes down to the broad question of, who is the one that's defined in, uh, defining good in economic times, and how do you limit that? Oh, okay. Is it, is the are we to ass- that, I, that I would say. Are we to assume that it's the Florida Congress that's doing this? That's the problem. We don't know who is going to be doing this. Well, well, it is, the, it, 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 it is, you know, the legislative body of the House and the Senate that, you know, will define these rules. Um but how they define them and, and who's a niche, what agenda they have and where is they coming from, will it be on the ballot, you know, all of that. It's a very broad, you know, complex amendment. That's why you will hear most people say vote no or don't vote at all because vote no keeps you, it keeps us where we are at least, you know, because this is a lot of information for people to process and very, very broad. Okay, all so, right. Those are just the things that I'm kind of pointing out to give people things to, to look at. If you're saying, okay, vote no would keep us flexible, allow us to change in economic times, uh, allow the ability to uh, change based on income, but it doesn't, you know, our population, or those different things. Well, even a vote no, my question still is, well, who determines that? Because a vote no on Amendment 3 is based on your personal income. It doesn't say anything about population. So what happens with population in Florida being one of the fastest growing states in, in the country? So that question is not answered either on Amendment 3, mm. on the no side. So it's just a very broad law. 
Okay. All right. So that's Amendment 3. Uh, I wanted to jump over and do Amendment 6. This one is a uh, prohibition on um, public funding of abortions. It says construction of abortion rights. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that one. Again, this is another, uh, I use the word survey, you know, like with uh, Amendment 1, that it's not necessarily a law at this point in time, but because, remember, like I said, things layer. Mm-hmm. So remember we said Amendment 1 is about health care reform. Are you for it? Are you against it? How do you feel about that, even though the law is in effect? You can pretty much look at Amendment 6 in the same way because one of the things that's going to come out of the health care law on the federal level is what? The question of abortion. And what should be covered and what should not be covered and all of that kind of stuff. So Amendment 6 is pretty much saying if you vote yes, you're saying the Florida's constitutional right to privacy, um, is not applicable to the abortion-related issues, which means that information, I assume, by reading that, will come become public. But what does public mean? Does that mean I put it on Facebook? What, you know, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. You'll hear no proponents say, you lose your privacy. But we really don't know what that means. You know, and I, I'm being devil's advocate here. I, I don't know if they're going to, is there going to be a list online? What does that mean? A vote yes will say uh, restrictive abortion laws to be found uh, constitutional by Florida courts, which again would give Florida the opportunity to amend, change whatever's going to come out of health care with the abortion issues to pay or not to pay. Uh, it would reinstate the Florida Constitution federal and state laws that prohibits public funds. This is a major thing public funds for being used for abortion and health care coverage. So basically, Amendment 6 is taking the, the information of saying that whatever happens in health care, Florida's going to make sure that abortion is not covered. So when everybody's so excited about, oh, we're so excited about health care and it's going to cover this and this and this and that, they have no idea that your state levels are working against those things. And you may be excited about something, but depending on what state you're living in, that's where it's going to come down to whether it's effective or not. So a vote no pretty much keeps the privacy issue in place where it is now. Uh, It extends the Florida constitutional right to privacy, and it doesn't place any language in the Constitution that prohibits public funding. So they're saying if the federal law, health care law, says we want to spend federal funding for rape or whatever is going to come out of that health care, voting no is going to be in line with that. Okay. And then if you vote, if you're supporting it, then it sounds like even if the health care law says that, let's say, some abortion uh, could be covered, with this particular law, we're, we're stamping to say um, it's kind of going to supersede what the federal law says. And so on a state level, we're saying that we will not allow any funds to be to cover those types of things, essentially. Right. That's, uh, that's correct. All right. Awesome. All right. Let's go to uh, you guys. Uh, remember, if you guys have any questions, 407-894-1680 is the number 407-894-1680. I know it's the kind of the informational hour right now. Uh, it's not too exciting per se, uh, but uh, but these are these are important times. Uh, we should know what it is they're asking us to either say no or yes to. Uh, so I hope you're listening and uh, and jotting down at least mentally uh, what 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 your position will be when you um, go into that booth or or if you have been to the booth. If you didn't know before, hopefully you'll figure out what exactly you were saying yes and or no to. Um, Amendment 8, that's where I want to go next, religious freedom. Now, this one was kind of interesting to me. I'll let you talk, and I'll tell you why it was interesting in a moment. Oh, well, it's, it's really interesting because <laughs> at least I, I'm, I'm curious to see what a lot of the churches are uh, supporting for or against this. But um, basically, it's an attempt to repeal a 126-year-old provision that's always been in place uh, in the state constitution that prohibits taxpayer funding of religious institutions. Um if passed, it, this will remove that provision, um, which means that it will allow the expansion of the Florida School Voucher Program to religious institutes and could result in money being directed to private, private religious schools at the expense of public schools. That's what the yes says. Uh, it will also allow for a greater number of religious programs to be supported by uh, taxpayer funds. Again, no on this amendment and every other amendment, all are consistent with saying that we want to keep things the same. So in regards to Amendment 8, it's saying we're maintaining the no aid provision, which basically means separating church and state. It maintains the constitutional provision uh, that courts uh, have cited with rejecting school voucher programs. 
uh, to fund religiously uh, religious affiliated schools, and again uh, maintaining the church and state. Uh, this is very confusing because you know all churches are starting charter schools every other day, and um, you know they fall under public school programs. Are they public school? Are they not? Are they private? Whatever the charter is, so much going on on the educational side. Um, I've seen a lot of advertisement going out saying, oh, you know, if you support amendment, if you say yes on Amendment 8, this can help us in our prison ministry and all these different kind of things. <laughs> so this is a very emotional uh, connection. And I'm, I'm curious to see what the churches have been saying, because one thing I noticed is a lot of churches don't, uh, a lot of them, some do, some don't, some are progressive in politics, some are not. But I, would, I, would, I, would be, I wouldn't be shocked to see if all of a sudden the ones that are not involved in politics all of a sudden start speaking up on Amendment 8. Mm. And, and that's what I found, you know, very interesting. Again, a lot of a lot of the candidates that have been, you know, visiting churches have pretty much said vote no on everything. But when I when I look at this amendment, it seems, you know, counterproductive. It seems like something from a religious point of view. If I if I have if I'm a pastor with a church, this seems like an amendment, especially if I'm a pastor with a church that has a school connected to it. This seems like an amendment that I want to, to you know, support in getting passed because now it's going to allow my school children to be able to reach out to, to Orange County, per se, um, and get some of that voucher money to be able to go to my school, which is only going to help my school, help my school yeah, do better. Know, technically, technically, pastors can't technically say... Yeah. Because of their five hundred one c three. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I'm not saying they. You know, obviously yeah. they're not going to speak on it, but but you know, mo- most but the, but the on average, real. the elected officials not interested in having to negotiate no more with a pastor than they already have to do. Right. And, and, well, you know, from, <laughs> from and I'm just being straight up. Mo- most of us go to the church again. I'm, you know, I keep it all the way real. I don't have nothing to lose. In order to go to a church and do all of that and. You sit down, and the pastors want to know pretty much just be straight up what you can do for them. You already got to cut so many deals as it is. So I can certainly see uh, an elected official not not being in support of this amendment because I already got to you know, send you money for charter and get the oh no, they get some federal funding and grants and everything else. Mm-hmm. So I can certainly see how an elected official let like, yeah let's keep it as separate as possible because we have to remember with the, the faith initiative. And when President Bush was running all around and running around to all the different churches, I was uh, uh, in Dallas, Texas, at the Potter's House. You know, um, and that was where that whole initiative came from, was from the faith-based initiative. And where the whole uh, mega church philosophy came out of was the faith-based initiative. So as an elected official, I don't want to have to cut no more deals with the church than I already have to. And, and that's, I'm just being real on that. Well, I guess that's another way to look at it, I suppose. That's <laughs> so definitely a different way of looking at it. But, but, I, I but I'm thinking, you know, as as I see it, you know, um, a lot of a lot of the, the charter schools that are funded by churches, a lot of them, uh, they do well or they do okay. Um, and so I just see an amendment like Amendment 8 only being able to enhance their ability uh, of what they can do within the community because now these are funds that they have access to that, well, that again, they've been limited what, against. What do you, you access to what? To your bigger house, your greed, your. Well, I mean, well, we're, we're, we're going to. There you go. We're going yeah, to. Again, we got to break this down. I'm going to say. I'm going to look at it like it's this. Not saying, it's not saying directly taken from the public schools. But again, I'm, I'm a fair believer. I believe that preachers need to go back to being preachers, politicians need to be politicians, yes. and uh, business people need to be business people. If anything is going to cross, it needs to be business people as politicians. I'm in business and I'm, I'm in politics. I'm not a pastor, nor will I ever be. And when you and, and when you start crossing those uh, different lines of sight that they talk about in the MBA program, you're getting confused. You're too focused on where the funding gonna come from and not the funding. And I gotta build this and build that to keep up with the funding and keep up with the numbers and run a certain amount of numbers. Because anytime government funding comes into play, now you're in a numbers game and now you're quota driven and now you're 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 let me play like I got members, let me play like I got students. So I don't know about stuff doing well when the pressure is on the people that have to fund your uh, competition with the state around the corner, which came through with the faith-based initiative. Mm. So let us direct our money to the public schools, and let's go ahead and let the teachers have the resources and funding <clears throat> yes. that they need in order to provide to the students, and let, let us let the bishops just get back to the old school where you got two, uh, two roles in the church, and let's just get back to praying based on what it says in Psalms, which is, 
pray for just my daily bread and green pastures. I Let's hear you. Yes. Yes. And move yes. away from churches and apartments and these and multi complexes because that's not what the Bible says. Well, you so know, we have to go back to what what down to the roots. Well, I, I hear that. I hear that yes. that particular message, but but nonetheless, um, you know, again, all, all we can do um, is is just hope that these individuals will do the right thing, yeah, and, well, and, and, that's, and that's and that's and that's and that's yeah. beyond. You yeah, know, it, no, it's it's just not, like no, we don't have time to be hoping. We don't have time to be hoping. We don't have time to be hoping. Well, it's it's no different. We don't have time to be hoping. It's no different though. Let me let yeah, me get no, a word no, in no, here. No, 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 we're not doing that. I'm not about to give you no no two million dollar take away. These are members are taking away over a billion billions of dollars from our school. We ain't got time to be hoping. We are yeah, logical thinkers. I, I don't even hope about damn school. thing because at the end of the day, I'm looking and seeing what you're doing. See now, I'm about to be getting the street side of me now. We ain't doing no more hoping. We did that, and this is the reason why we have 400 women in the state of Florida under the age of 40 that die from AIDS every year. We're not talking about HIV and people who don't know. We're talking about die. It's the reason why you got more black men in prison than were enslaved in 1850. It's the reason why we got double digits unemployment for African Americans across the country. It's the reason why black students are scoring at 38% in the, in the state of Florida. We are scoring equal to non-speaking English students. So we don't have time for no hope, because the hope, the, the numbers are clearly saying we're not doing what we're supposed to do. Well, so well, and black people have been leading and believing what everybody, the, the alleged leaders are saying, well, and, and go on by what our churches, with nothing against churches, I go to a church too. But it ain't, we don't have time for no hoping. No, I, 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 what, I'm though, what I'm yeah. saying though, Tez, what I'm saying though, Tez, is that um, nonetheless, you know, again, you, you can't, just like we can't dictate what, what people do when we vote them into office, um, and basically we're hoping that they do something for us in that, in that sense as well. Um, it's the same. It's the same concept with this amendment. No, it's not the same so, concept because when you're voting somebody in office, you're voting representative government that is there based on who you're saying you want in office. When I am, I am not voting in nobody that's called by God. When God calls you to do something, the same way He's called me to do what I'm doing, it is not up to no taxpayer to say which money I need to run around. I've done over ten different get out the vote this year by myself <laughs> with no funding, and it ain't up to no government or no grant or nothing to no. tell me. What I need to be doing and not need to be doing, because if you call by God, you call by God. So again, the Bible also says, study and show yourself approved. And really, if you really want to go down, because I know the Bible too, the Bible, remember when he went to church and turned over the temples, he said, what are you doing in my father's house selling this merchandise? Mm. The temple was about going mm. to pray and go back home. Mm. Nonetheless. Um, line. So I, and, and, I, and I and I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Tiz. I'm man. with yeah. you, but 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 again, nonetheless, all but all again, that being why, said, see, this is why, all this that is being why said, it, it, it doesn't make it doesn't make the idea it doesn't make the idea um, evil because because you can't you can't you can't expect. I'm saying it's evil. You can't expect. Logical. I said the separation of church and state is very important. This is the reason why, if everything we've been doing is so right, then why is the black community suffering the way that it is? Why do you have churches in the hood that are draining? Well, well, again, that, that's, about, that, that's 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 a that's that's a deeper topic than no, what we're talking about today. We all need to go deep. We all need to go deep. And that so and that what, and guess what, Jim? But guess what, Jim? You can that? give your ten percent of your offering, and then you can hope that it be get done well. <laughs> but what we're not gonna do is take it out somebody's check. That's what we're not gonna do. Well, well, uh, and and that's fine too. But <laughs> but I'm just saying the the idea. Just the general idea, what, what what people do with it, we we can't we can't tell. I think one of the reasons why people oppose it is is probably due to the fact that, especially when you're talking about the black community, the black community why, probably expects why, that none of these funds would ever can't. reach us anyway. So so we need to oppose it because okay. we wouldn't be the organizations that received it in the first place. Right, but but, but it doesn't know. make it doesn't make a, again you know well, if I if, if it got people, used for the I right said, purposes it would be well, again, okay. I, I said it was a reason why you separated church and state in the beginning that that's that's what it is is separation of church and state that that's what it is bottom line with some logical thinkers and forefathers that said let us not confuse i got real problems with politicians running around saying god bless you know every other sentence and using that as a way of selling their platform and selling their initiative and selling because when you're talking to a hurting people, the only thing they have is hope in God. So when you're talking to a hurting people and saying, just give me a little bit more at your pocket, a little bit more, a little bit more, it is very uh, predatory leadership. And it is something that I believe 
uh, that the buying the but I believe the Bible said it. You know, twelve is the perfection of government and leadership on all accounts, and and that's what it means in the Bible. And leaders don't have to necessarily come from a church and don't necessarily have to come from like like we think they're leaders because there's false prophets out there as well. Right. So nobody's saying that it's evil, but what the Bible does say is to study and show yourselves approved. And in the Bible, church and state was separated. So you had your tithes and you had your taxes. So we're not going to start mixing it up based on what was done 2,000 years ago. They separated 2,000 years ago. So let's go ahead and, and keep it true to what it was 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying it's evil, but let us just say, if we just take a, a sample and see are the churches necessarily using the re resources like they should, well, I would say overwhelmingly that apparently they're not. Because look at the people. Well, look at the I, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to have a discussion of what the church is or isn't doing, but um, that's what well, I'm trying I'm to that, avoid. But I'm gonna I'm gonna not have that conversation tonight. But but well, but, but again, because because we already word, know. Church, let me just say this though, right quickly. When people see that's what, why these amendments are so confusing. Because when people see the word church and they see the word veteran, like in a lot of these other amendments, I'm a veteran myself. When they see those words, they immediately go to the sympathetic. Oh, well, that don't mean evil. That don't mean this. Oh, sure, veterans this and that. And, and at the end of the day, we have to start looking at how we're served. We have to start looking at, are you, do you have due diligence to do what you're already doing at the level that you're already doing it at? If God is not blessing you and your ministry to do what it is you need to do, then there might be something wrong with your ministry. Everybody's not called to be in the ministry. I know I'm not, and I can preach some of these passes under the table, but I'm not going nobody's pulpit. Because I know my vices, so everybody don't need... I'm over here on the for-profit side to get out here and hustle every day. No grants, no federal governments, no nothing. So again, there was a reason why this church and state was established 2,000 years ago, the separation. Mm. Well, all right. Well, like I said, that, that's fine. I'm not trying to convince anybody. But uh, well, I am. Well, guess what? I am. I see you're trying to convince people. I, yeah, I hear I'm that. Not, but, yeah, uh, it's not even about this amendment. It's about the ideology, the mentality. That, that we are so confused and keep thinking that the same things we've been hearing for the last 30, 40, 60, 70 years, the people are doing worse. So at some point in time, we got to sit down and figure out what are we doing wrong. This is the time to have the conversation. Because guess where our, our knowledge comes from? The church. So if this ain't the time, then what is the time? Well, and 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 that and again, I I got some comments on that one, but I'm, I'm trying to get to these amendments, but <laughs> but um, but uh, but, but uh, you know what? I'm just leaving it alone, and uh, I'm gonna just go to Amendment 11 real quick. Um, additional homestead <laughs> exemption: uh, low-income seniors who maintain uh, long-term residency on property equal assessed value. What's happening with this one? Um, I mean, it's just plain and simple. Like I was saying a minute ago, anytime you put veterans and you know, elderly and church, you know, it brings up emotional uh, feelings about my pastor when I was 12. You know, all those things that's making you say, you know, doesn't mean it's evil type thing. That's the same thing, you know, with this amendment. Just saying low-income seniors, uh, you know, can receive a tax break. Uh, the the thing about it is uh, you're talking about $27.8 million uh, that will be taken away from the government services uh, that are needed. So... You know, those are just one of those things that you have to look at to say, uh, are we going to reduce, you know, how we're getting our money in the state of Florida? A huge amount of that comes from property tax. So it's not just Amendment 11. It's 2, 4, 9, and 11 that are all associated with a, a huge chunk of money uh, on how we're, we're uh, you know, operating our school systems and our, our services and, and so forth. And, again, um, for the simple fact that Florida comes in, you know, 46, 47, pretty much at 50 consistently uh, across the board with education, uh, I, I think we need to uh, really focus on, you know, where we're spending our money and what's important. And if education is important, and that's what we need to be doing, and we need to let the church do the church and let the education do the education, let the, the crime and, you know, let, let them do, let the police do what they do and the fire do what they do. Everybody needs to start getting back to their lane. You know, so this, this amendment falls into all of those other emotional tax amendments um, that will reduce the amount of income we get in Florida. Okay, and so you were referencing um, Amendment 2, Veterans Disabled Due to Combat Injury, a Homestead Property Tax mm -hmm. Discount. Mm -hmm. uh, amendment 4, the Property Tax Limitations 
uh, Amendment 9, the Homestead Property Tax Exemption for Survival, Spouse, a Military, uh, Veteran, or First Responder, and then again, Amendment 11, which are basically, um, like you say, reducing the government revenue uh, to basically uh, help some particular group of individuals, uh, some some groups larger than others, uh, but some group of individuals um, in, in, I guess you could say, a time of uh, need, perhaps, or, or at least do well, them a favor, I guess. Right. Well, again, you know, these are all emotionally based amendments. So that's the reason most people that, you know, like you're saying, oh, well, that don't mean it's evil. Or the poor citizens or the two poor veterans, more than likely, they're going to be yes on 24911 because that is their mentality way of thinking. Instead of really understanding, like when it's talking about veterans, disabled veterans, I did my time in Oklahoma City. So now that I've moved here in 2005, this is saying that no matter where you did your time, what you did, you can just come to the state of Florida and receive that benefit, kind of like how O.J. Simpson did. Well, let me just go on and come to the state of Florida and not have to worry about the Homestead Act because I don't necessarily have to pay the penalty. And I don't have to lose the things that maybe I, was ju- I should justly lose if I just moved to the state of Florida. So it's a bigger concept because, again, the emotional base, oh, when you see disabled, who want to vote against somebody disabled? When you see low income, who want to vote against somebody low income? When you see surviving spouses, what survivor on anything wants to vote vote against that? So when you're talking about predatory people going into the voting block, and I know I don't have no money, I'm low income, and I'm probably going to be a low income senior, and my mama don't have no money, and my daddy died with nothing but in my closet, I'm speaking from personal reference, then of course I'm going to be emotionally tapped into that. When I think about surviving spouses of veterans, of course I'm going to think about if I had a husband, because guess what, I did my time, I was going to re-enlist on 9-11, so my emotional connection is going to say, oh, if something happened to me, I want to make sure that my husband's taken care of. When I think about this, veterans my emotional tap is going to say if i did go in i was a security police officer so i was on the front line so if i did go in and i become disabled oh i want my daughter to be taken care of i'm now emotionally thinking and not thinking about the 1.045 billion dollars that we're getting ready to lose over the next three years so they're emotionally tapped, where now you're talking about evil versus good. Oh, it's not evil. It don't mean it's evil. Who said it's evil? Nobody said it's evil. We're talking about logical thinkers. Hmm. All right, all right. And, uh, Politics is money, period, point blank. Don't have nothing to do. Everything else is emotional. It's not race. I know your thing said about race. Don't have nothing to do with no race. The only color that's involved in politics is green. And guess who's not getting it? Black folks, straight up, with a black president or not. Bottom line, the numbers are indisputable. We're not getting it. We're certainly not getting it here in the I-4 corridor, which is one of the most important, uh, you know, swing states out of everybody. We're not getting it. So race has nothing to do with it. The illusion that it does is the trick and the trap and the emotional setup that we keep failing under. Well, I'm with you on that. I don't think race has anything to do with what's happening um, in politics today. Now, the the last two, um, and there's Amendment 5 and Amendment 12. Um, and uh, just real quick, Amendment 5, which has to do with the Florida Supreme Court uh, justice um, having to be confirmed by the Senate, um, as opposed to, I think the current way is that the governor basically picks who's going to be there, and then that's about it. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, anytime you start, uh, again, there's organizations that are against, you know, judicial branches of government having to have anything to do with politics. I agree with that because judicial is supposed to be our balance. And so once you start bringing that into politics, now you're kind of shifting the balance. So the bottom line is um, if the government, just the same way, if I, if I come in and take over a company. All right, real quick, I'm, Taz, I got to, uh, I, I see my, my time is up. I got to get out of here. Um, so real quick, I thank you for uh, joining me tonight. Um, I appreciate it as always. Thank you. Thank you, uh, yeah, audience, thank you, for, uh, thank for you listening to we us. We enjoyed you, definitely. Um, and we will be back next week, Real Family Talk. Remember, find us on Facebook, Real Family Talk. Find us on Twitter.com, Real Family Talk. Find us on YouTube, Real Family Talk. And uh, this is your host, Jay Real. Again, thank you, Tez. Uh, no you can problem. Find I'm going to send you a summary so you can post that for your listeners so that it can go over Amendment 5 and, and so forth and, and all of the ones we talked about tonight. Uh, thank you again, Tez. We appreciate it. Uh, we will see you next week. This is WOKB 1680 signing off Real Family Talk.